Welcome to the Well of Nashville, everybody. All of our friends in the house here and our neighbors in Goodlettsville. It's a beautiful day here in Middle Tennessee, so we have the doors open in the back of the church. If you're watching online, I'm sorry you can't see how wonderful that is. And We're just leaving room for the neighbors to come up with lawn chairs if they'd like. We're going to turn it up a little bit. <laughs> no, we won't hurt you. It's a new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. So come on in. Let's get settled in. I know the fellowship is good. We'll have some more fellowship. Well, whenever the Lord gets done navigating the river with us, there'll be more of that. Lots going on today. If you're watching online, even at any time, I invite you to invite your friends and neighbors. I believe the Lord has something very special for you today. He always does. He promises that when people gather in my name, when two or more are gathered in my name, what? There I am in the middle of them. So there's something about, yes, the Lord is everywhere. He's omni-everything. But when you come to purpose your gathering to meet with the Lord, He manifests something of His divine presence in the middle of a gathering when we worship. And I'd say set your hearts with expectation. If you can, like... Uh, I don't know what your week's been like. It doesn't matter. The Lord said, shake off your day. Shake off whatever life has done, good or bad. You may feel, hey, it's awesome, and I'm distracted because everything is good. Well, then give thanks to the Lord, and you may feel like, I'm too distracted because everything's bad right now. The Lord says, shake that off and just trust me. Cast your burden and come here and get, let me let me just kind of surround you with my glory and my goodness and receive what I have for you today. Because the Lord's going to pour out something fresh. We've been just praying this morning and already worshiping. And the Lord has just landed and we got blasted by the Holy Spirit. And it's beautiful. We feel an anticipation. So uh, I bless you with a release of what the Holy Spirit has for this day, for this time. Whatever God is unfolding in the scroll of your life right now, may it, we bless it in the name of the Lord. Leanne and I as pastors and shepherds of the house that guard the purposes of the Lord of this house, bless you with all that the Lord is unfolding right now your purposes, your healing, vision for your future, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Somebody's already praising him out on the sidewalk. That's right. Praising him on the sidewalk. So Lord, let your glory fill this temple. Lord, not just the building, but these living stones, your sons and daughters in this house and all of our friends tuning in around the world. We bless you. Bless you for what the Lord is going to release in this time with him. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Uh, uh, ooh, thank you, Carl. In rehearsal this morning, I saw the King of Kings on the white horse. And he was riding. And we, when he got here at the well, he had a red sash over him. And as he rode through this area, he took the sash off and he went <sighs> and it landed on the well. I go, oh my word. I said, Lord, what is that? He says, it's the sash of salvation. So I said, Lord, saving from what? I like, I always ask questions. I don't want to assume ever. Lord said, I'm saving my people from whatever they need saving from. <laughs> I'm rescuing this. This is the day of saving. Now, it might be salvation, but he's in the saving mood every day. He loves to save his kids. So this morning, Lord, we just thank you for who you are. I thank you for the sash of salvation that was released over this house today. And we worship you. We worship you. Church, come on, let's just worship. We don't need a song. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. You're amazing. You're magnificent in all your ways. You're beautiful. You're worthy to be praised. You're wonderful. You're magnificent. Oh, yes, Lord. We worship you. We bow our hearts. 
Lord, see your greatness. Right now, shift, shift. We're shifting into joy this morning, shifting into joy. Joy in the house. It's 
so glad the Lord brought you to this house. You both are such a light and a strength to us. And it's just amazing. God's networking, God's orchestrating of his, his people. And something happened to you last week. And she shared it with me before service. You can be seated if you want. But I just want you to know what's happening. The power the authority that we have in the Lord affects not only our lives, but others as we step into it. So I've asked Green to just come up and share just quickly this testimony. Yes, yeah, so part of this testimony is also just to say that we need community and we need church yeah, family and we can't do life alone. We can't just be inside the walls of our own home. We need each other. And so when um, there's a lot of things that I'm praying for in my own life and that for healing, um, this one has been a stronghold of, um, of my life in my life. It came into trauma. It was a traumatic event 26 years ago, and it came in. It's been a stronghold in my life for 26 years. And um, long story short, I came in last Wednesday, this, not this past Wednesday, but two Wednesdays ago, we, Mike and I came um, for service, and, and um, after worship, which was amazing, the presence of the Lord was so heavy, and the Holy Spirit was just moving in the room, Carol came, out, Carol came o over to me afterwards and said the Lord felt like he wanted to share a word with me, which is, therefore, there's no shame or condemnation in Christ Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. So I just like felt like he was talking to me then. Um, and then afterwards, after the service, Robin and I were speaking, and I was telling her that I really felt that there's just a being attacked spiritually, and I would really wanted some deliverance. And and so all the, a whole bunch of the women came up and prayed, and we did a deliverance. And God broke, and, he, and immediately he broke something off of me. And... Um, one, so what it is, is um, for 26 years, it came in from trauma, and I'm not going to go into the story, but it's really powerful, but is that I've been eating at night, like a nighttime eating, waking up and eating, even if it's healthy, and it, eating something at night to fill my heart, to fill my stomach, rather than like really resting in the presence of the Lord, and it broke, and seven days later, I didn't, didn't eat one, I just, I've been trying to do this in my own strength. And so, again, it's, again, we can't do this in our own strength. We have to do it only in his strength because it's the, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he has given us, comes to give us life and life abundantly. And on day, night seven, I woke up to get some water, and I felt like this kind of pulling to go do it again, and the Lord's like, Holy Spirit. It was just, I heard it from Holy Spirit. He said, it is finished. It is night seven. It is done. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, thank you what you did on the cross. So, yeah. Yeah, let's give the Lord Thanksgiving. Thank you, Rena. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Rena. I'll tell you, she, uh, <laughs> Robin brought her over and said, uh, where do, can we make an appointment? Or where do we go to make an appointment for deliverance? in this place and I go how about right now and we go come on sit down there's no place like right now to step into the authority the Lord's given us over everything that the enemy has he has he, he is of no relevance in my life we give him way too much attention y'all how many times do we're always trying to figure out what the enemy's doing what the enemy plan is, the strategy, the strategies. Hmm. I 
think I'm supposed to share this. I'll make it brief. But we used to go with some folks, wonderful folks, to do ministry on the Capitol. And nearly every time we would go, we're always looking to see what the devil's doing. And there just came a place, I'm going, why, are we, why do we care what he's doing? And so literally, we shifted our focus, even in, in this house, we stopped looking for the devil. The only reason we ever deal with him is if he gets in our way. Just like when he was in Rena's way, we said, no more, no more. You got to go in Jesus' name. Getting militant about who we are in Christ and living in the peace. Oh my goodness, church. And the joy that is ours. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We won't be quiet. 
Release my people from strongholds. There's no shame and no guilt and no condemnation in strongholds. When we see them, when we recognize them, the Lord wants to free us from them. Because it's the enemy. Strongholds are only from the enemy. So I'm going to speak to that stronghold today. If that's you... Engage your spirit right now. Huh. That thing is going to go. Thank you, Rena, for opening that place, setting the pace for a new place. Yes. Things in the spirit, freedom in the spirit. The red sash of salvation has been laid on this house. And this is part of it. strongholds. I want to also speak to unforgiveness that might be related to it. It's probably feeding it. But Lord, if there's any strongholds in our lives, and Lord, I'm, I'm starting right here. Any strongholds have to come under the blood of Jesus. So Father, in the powerful name, the matchless name of Jesus. I speak to every stronghold that is represented in this room and online. I speak to you and I say you have to go. You have to release your hold in Jesus' name. Go, go, right now. Go, 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 right now. Go, go, go. It's time to be free. Go, ho. Yes, Connie, there's something to be released on that.
Huh. Huh. Lord says, just breathe. <laughs> just breathe. He's taken care of it all. It's finished. This is your day of deliverance. Lord has amazing, an amazing plan for you. The Lord knew that you were not going to be able to move ahead until you were released from this stronghold. So I thank you, Father, for the ministry that you have done right now in this house and online. The ministry, Holy Spirit. The ministry of the angels, we bless you this morning.
of your ways <laughs> You are wonderful And worthy of all of our praise You are perfect In all of your ways Oh yes you are You are wonderful
can rest in complete confidence that your love for us is unconditional. It's everlasting, full of grace, full of the immense dimension of your ability to love. I thank you, Lord, that you go beyond our definition of love. You are not framed, and you cannot be framed by our experience of what looks lo love looks like or has looked like. Lord, I thank you that you're ever increasing in us an understanding and an ability to receive your love, first of all. Because sometime our, sometimes our love receivers are broken. They've been shut down. They've been cut off. But the Lord in his amazing grace, church, is opening our receptors to a new place of being loved by the Father God, the Holy One, the one who created you. It's so beautiful. It's going deeper and deeper and deeper. He's going to the crevices, the farthest places where maybe love has never touched your life. So Lord, we, we open wide our gates and we say, we give you full access to every part of our spirit, our minds, our bodies. We give access to every part to be filled to overflowing with the love of God. That your heart may be and will be seen, felt, experienced, understood, applied, and that we will be changed into your likeness in your immense love. Father, I thank you this morning that you are calling every one of us up to a higher place in you. We can step out of our minds right now we're stepping into our spirits to understand these things because our mind just fritzes out and just begins to go, this, 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 this. I can't figure this out. You can't. But your spirit's going, yes, 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 yes. 
I want this. I know this. I've been longing for this. Lord says, today is the day I'm restoring your receptors of love so that you can receive my love. The Father is calling the Son to experience His love. The vast dimension of His great and mighty love to prove the lake and plumb the depths to rise to the highest heights. We're going up higher and higher. We're gonna go deep. We are flooded and filled with God Himself. Ooh, sing it again. We're going up higher and higher. We're going to go deeper and deeper. For we are.
Stay in that place. Keep receiving his love even as we move into communion. It's all because of what Jesus did on the cross. That we even have these moments. We can have these moments all day long. So when you're ready, you can make your way to the communion table in the back. If you would just take the elements, hold them, and we will pray together over them as a family. So the Lord put on my heart, Psalm 24, starting at verse 7 through the end of it. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye filled up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Who is this king of, or excuse me, verse 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. You are glorious. Glorious, you are glorious, you are glorious, glorious, you are I know there's all kinds of ways that we can think about communion, but for me, it always comes back to being a covenant meal. And you know, the 70 elders went up with Moses up on the mountain and they saw God, it says in Exodus. They saw God. 70 of them saw God and they sat and ate and drank. Yes. And then that was the beginning of the old covenant. And then Jesus sat with his 12 disciples. And that was the new covenant. But we're so blessed because as believers, that Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, he says that Jesus instructed the meal was to be done in remembrance. Remember? Do this in remembrance of me as often as you do it. Do it in remembrance of me. And for me, it's very personal. I know that God cut covenant with Jesus but I'm in Jesus. <laughs> I'm in him. I'm in both of them. <laughs> and so, so this covenant meal that we take so frequently, so wonderfully frequently, this covenant meal, it's a real serious thing. Because in covenant, everything you have belongs to the other. And he's already given us everything he is. In fact, it says that with Jesus, he also give us freely all things. So it is our place during, I believe, during communion that we once again say, Lord, all of me, yeah. all of me is yours. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread 
and said, Take it. This is my body, which is in exchange for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat. We remember, Lord, yes. that you bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. You were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And with your wounds, we are healed. Yes, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as it is used to drink it in remembrance of me. We remember, Lord, we remember that poured out blood, Lord, and we drink it, receiving all of your life, all of your life, all of it. Let's drink. And I want to declare this over you from Hebrews. Receive it. Now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus. I'm sorry, but that's just the best part. He brought him back. That great shepherd of the sheep, may he equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. (laughs) Well, I think we better seal that. You are glorious. thanks on. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, the name above all names. Jesus, Jesus, we love you. We so honor you, Jesus, our friend, our redeemer, our savior, our shepherd, our king. (laughs) Lord, we praise you. We praise you for all that you've done. We praise you for all you're going to do. We praise you for what you're doing right now. But we worship you for who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, team. Just lovely. You got to wait. Okay. Thank you, team. (laughs) I was remiss um, when we were singing God of the Impossible and the exhortation about strongholds. And then about his love. Nothing is impossible. And that thing that has been right here in front of you that has seemed impossible is not impossible because of his love that is for you and that is 
in you. And I just sense the Lord saying, turn loose of the mindset of impossible. Turn loose of thinking it's impossible. So what if a doctor said something? So what if a bank says something? So what if Wall Street says something? It doesn't, it doesn't matter because he is the God of the impossible. And the way the impossible is manifested is through his love because we believe that he loves us. And so I just want to encourage you. I feel like there's somebody, maybe not everybody. There is somebody here today who has had an impossible thing in their head. And the Lord is saying, if you will turn loose, if you will turn loose of it, turn loose of it and walk away from it, it will no longer be impossible. Yeah, you got it. You giving me the mic after that one? I'm the You better take it, I just had a thought. Who wants to keep worshiping? Got it. Guess how we're gonna keep worshiping? We're going to give generously, just like Jesus gave us generously. So, Don and Joseph, if y'all want to come on up, um, really, we are going to receive an offering um, today. And there are a lot of ways you can give, but I just wanted to have a personal little input on something that I didn't realize a lot of times before. You know, when the Lord says, test me on this when you give, test me. It's the only time he ever said that, pretty much, I think. And see if I want to open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing on you when you give. And you know, just a little side note, you know it costs over $10,000 a month for the well to run. Isn't that huge? I mean, I had no idea. It's over $10,000. Now, I'm not saying that to go, okay, now that to feel, feel guilty. No, it is such an honor to partake in what goes on here. This buffet is absolutely beautiful. It really is. So I think if anybody wants to partake in that buffet and contribute in any way to that beautiful blessing that we enjoy every time we get together, we're going to do that now. So um, if you want it, there are several ways to give. A great way, since everybody uses their phones these days, is by texting 615-567-5075. It sets it up permanently. You can just enter the amount anytime you want to give. And if you're writing a check, which I don't know if a lot of people write checks anymore. A few people do. My mother does. <laughs> you make your checks payable to the well of Nashville slash ACT. And if you want to give cash, you can just put cash in the bucket. But a lot of people want credit, you know, for the tax deduction. So if you do, you need to just fill out an envelope. Does anybody need an envelope just for the cash, just giving cash? Okay. All right. Online, you get to participate, too, in this awesome buffet and worshiping even more. So online, if you press that support tab located on the screen, then you can give. It'll teach you, how, show you how to do that. Um, I think that's it. Anything else? Okay. Lord, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you so much that you give us this opportunity to continue worshiping you. Lord, thank you for the generosity of this body that meets the practical needs here every month, Lord. So we're honored to do that, Lord. And we thank you and bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Gary, where are you at? Where's our friend Gary? Joe, Jerry's got some too. Come on, Jerry. Jerry, Gary, Harry, Mary. Never, no, no. Kind of dangerous getting this up here, you know. You don't know the directions we might be wanting to go. <laughs> I do want to welcome everyone. I get up in the morning, and this is the honest feeling. I'm going, 
Lord, who are you going to bring to the house today that we can honor? Because you are honored guests, not visitors. We don't use that word here. You're a guest. And that word today that, Teresa, you gave, maybe it was for someone online or someone here, but I confirm that. There is someone here that has been brought, uh, male, not female, and a lot of questions swirling in your mind, and this is the place that God's brought you to speak to your heart. If you just listen in this next few moments, you'll find some answers. So, amen. Um, Real quickly, I I just want to say before we look at the announcements, it's amazing what we do in this small little body. And you might go, why are you here in this little church? Well, truthfully, sent by the Lord in 2009, after uh, closing down a large congregation over by the airport, and I did not want to drive all the way to Goodlettsville from the airport in 2009, and I've been doing it all along. And then what made it a little bit more interesting is that uh, as the chairman of the Pastors Association for the city, I'm thinking, well, there's so many other churches closer. But here's where I was at, and this is will relate to what we're doing here, is that in truth, when you do church so many years and you're raised in the church, I'm done with the hype and I'm done with the manipulation. I, I'm just done with anything that's not real. I, I'm done, I don't mean to be unkind, but performed worship. I mean, I'm just done with it because it doesn't satisfy. It's not what the Father's after. He's working on all of us to make it more real. And so when I first came here, I hid in the back for a while. Came late, <laughs> left early because I didn't want to be seen. I wanted to check it out. But the Lord has found this to be a trustworthy fellowship. He's entrusted so much to us. And part of our gathering and the things I'll share with you it's really because he has entrusted us much, and he tells us that from time to time. So it's pretty pow- powerful to have the Father say, I trust you. <laughs> and so I am a town crier. I'm inviting everybody I know how to invite, and I do. I'm not going to ask how many I invited here, but I have invited a lot of you <laughs> over the years. <laughs> hey, so neat things are coming up. And if you have your calendar on your phone, it's fine to look at, but make note of <clears throat> today at 2 o'clock, my very own friend here, uh, all of your friends, Miss <laughs> Dawn Bliss, love that lady, did her wedding and still making it, yeah. doing good. Patriot, or Pat, how do you say that? Patriot Academy. Biblical citizenship, and there's going to be a lunch break uh, and a service, uh, see the lunch break, and then starts at 2, goes to 4. Some of you have signed up for this. This is going to be really powerful to understand these principles. It'll help in the decisions you make, and you don't get pulled this way or that way by persuasion of men and their different opinions and voices. So, Don, thank you for coming into this house and bringing us such quality uh, opportunities every Sunday for the next seven weeks. If you want to look at it quickly, we do have men that meet separately and women, but on uh, September 30th, there is no median in, Oct- let's see, is it in October because that's my birthday month. Yeah, that, that's why you did it. <laughs> yeah, so we may have something going on there. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> But on the 28th, Miss Lisa, you come into this house with such gifts. We honor the uh, artwork and the opportunities to train and disciple so many through your incredible classes. And so we have a prophetic art gallery meeting right here, October 28th, Saturday, 10 to 12. You might think you're not very artistic. You come and you'll find out what's in there. She'll bring it out. I wanted to say just for a moment, I'm excited about a conference. We haven't done a Sounds of Glory conference for a while. We, um, that song that you did today so brought back wonderful memories, Higher. We recorded the album at the last conference 
from this worship band and others added, and you can get that over there. It's a shameless promotion. <laughs> Because it's my favorite live album of Leanne and, and the team. We recorded it at Belmont Church, of all places. So you really ought to listen to that one. It's so rich. And it's focused on a lot of the new songs that God's given Leanne, but just uh, what I'm focused on. I just want to get closer. I just have to get closer. That song says it so well. There is this conference, you can notice, 3 through 5 of November, Ohel Moed, and the Sounds of Glory conference here at the well. Of course, Ray Hughes will be back. A lot of us know Ray and appreciate him. Uh, Grant and Sam, we, we call her Sam Mahoney, flaming red hair. Uh, <laughs> Grant and Sam from, well, they live in Ireland, but they're from New Zealand, formerly from South Africa, so they've been around. And this conference has limited seating. It will be a full house. But if this strikes your attention at all, Path of Truth, these guys are rich in what they deliver, giving us understanding the heavenly realm, and you just might not want to miss that. 22nd of November, a Thanksgiving break, and then a big old party and a bonfire at your place, the farm on November 24th. I love it when a church is small enough you can be seen, and you can find people around the bonfire and be seen. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, it's so neat for our new folks that are coming in to be seen and known by name. Thank you so much for listening. Without further ado, I have somebody I'd like to introduce to you. Oh, there are some others. Who else is talking? Gary? Of course. Gary, come on up. This is a very important season for the feast, Tabernacle Feast. Here we go, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, is that? Oh, I didn't know you were. That's your. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> um, you know, we were. So much has happened. This has been a smorgasbord this morning. Okay. Let's never take this for granted. Ever. 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 Okay. My heart is so full. <laughs> it really is. But there's so much more. There's so much more. We've been talking about the love receptors this morning. I have been, this is, I'm, I'm getting to the feast in just a moment. But, um, but, you know, I have been reading a book called Imagining Heaven. And it's a book with actual testimonies of people have, who've had near-death experiences and what they saw and so on and so forth. And one thing that stood out to me was that, <clears throat> was that, as people went through the life review, okay, not judgment, but the life review, okay, because it wasn't final yet or what have you, uh, that the biggest thing that stood out is, how, is, is, is not how much you accomplished or what, it's how well you loved, okay? Um, and now, there's another thing that I don't want to move so quickly off of that, I want that to sink into all of us. I really do. But at the same, because that's so important. But at the same time, Teresa mentioned, that's okay. (laughs) Teresa mentioned covenant. And I believe that the same religious spirits that have clamped down on our ability to love, okay, and our ability to um, even know about the power we have in Holy Spirit, those same spirits have historically kept us ignorant of God's covenants, okay, and of the feasts, okay? And by the way, it's so funny that I'm talking about feasts because... Tonight, through tomorrow night, the Day of Atonement, is a fast for 24 hours. Only the Lord could turn a fast into a feast. (laughs) Something to um, wrap my mind around, I'm sure. Um, But we tonight are... I'm going to set these down here real quick. We are coming into 
the Day of Atonement. Now, just a quick, quick uh, recap. There are seven feasts of the Lord, okay? And I emphasize their feasts of the Lord, okay? I know a couple of weeks ago I was said this in an inappropriate manner, and I've apologized for that, but, but I, I do stand by what I said. These are not Jewish holidays. They're not Jewish feasts, okay? They're, they're the feasts of the Messiah, they belong to us. Passover, Yeshua is the Lamb. Pentecost, or Shavuot, he's the giver of Holy Spirit. Feast of Trumpets, he's the returning king. Feast of Tabernacles, which starts this coming Friday, he is our eternal tabernacle. But tonight begins the feast of Yeshua as our high, our great high priest who has pierced through the heavenly realms and has gone through Elizabeth. His, those doors have opened up. <laughs> that was so appropriate this morning. He's coming back for a holy nation. Okay. Now, I want you to see something quickly. I am a subscriber to a, a stream of theology that you may not have ever heard of before. I'm going to introduce it to you. It's the put the toys back where you found them theology. Okay. <laughs> You're like, what in the world is he talking about? I'll explain. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> going back to covenants much of what we rightfully apply to ourselves I'll give you some examples no weapon formed against you will prosper dry, your dry bones will live one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. Your old men will dream dreams, your young men will, uh, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. We get to share in those promises. We don't own them. Now, yes, the Lord owns them, right, right, but He gave them to a certain people group. <laughs> And those promises, every one of them, are still hanging out there for that people group to walk into. And they will, they will walk into them. They will be, find their complete fulfillment when his countrymen, according to the flesh, when they walk into them as, and fulfill their covenant. And one of those promises is that you will be a holy nation. Yes, that belongs to us. But we share in it because, it will, because you, the Israel was called, is called to be a holy nation. Look it up, Isaiah 19.6, um, uh, Exodus 19.6. Isaiah 61, 6. They're not walking in that right now, but they will someday. They will someday. Messiah will return when the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I'm sure of the rest of the nations too, cry out and they will say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then I don't know how the, this will all shake out. I don't worry too much about this, but I believe that once he returns on the Feast of Trumpets, then he will come into his temple. I do believe the temple will be rebuilt. Again, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that, but I do believe it will be rebuilt. And he will fulfill what Malachi 3.1 says, that he will come into his temple and he will sit as a refiner's fire. And he will be revealed as the great high 
priest for all, for, the, for God's holy people, Jew and Gentile alike. Now, I want to mention quickly, tomorrow morning, tonight starts the Day of Atonement. I know I'm kind of going around all over the place here. <laughs> Through tomorrow night, it's considered the holiest day on the Jewish calendar. Okay, I'll come to that in just a moment. But it is an incredible time to pray for the Jewish people. There is a temple that's being built in Israel. It's not being made, built with, but with bricks. It's hearts. More Jewish people are coming to faith than ever before. And you have an opportunity tomorrow, if, you, if you're so led, 9 in the morning, uh, you can go to god.tv slash pray for Israel, and you can join with Messianic Jewish evangelist and pastor Ron Cantor for an hour of prayer. There'll be probably hundreds of other ministries involved for an hour of prayer live on god.tv God .tv slash pray for Israel. It's the one day of the year that the high priest was allowed to enter into the Holy of Holies. Thank God we have a high priest who's entered into that Holy of Holies. And we are walking Holy of Holies. Come on. But for, for the people, for the Jewish people, they will be in synagogue literally all day tomorrow, the, the religious Jewish people, the observant ones. And they will be crying out, hoping that God will, will hear the prayers for acceptance into a good year. Okay, According to Judaism, there are gates that are open on, on, on the, day, the, day of, uh, the, the Feast of Trumpets, and then they're closed on the Day of Atonement that, you know, determine whether you have a good year or not. That can never replace the sacrifice that Yeshua made. can never replace it. So this is an excellent time to pray for Jewish people, Ladonna, I know you, you are uh, you follow Dutch sheets. The foreword, okay, the foreword for the Jewish people is written in the book. <laughs> okay, it's written in the book. So, some things that that um, that we could. And by the way, if you're watching this, and you are Jewish and you kind of have not, you know, considered the Jesus question for your life, then I would just encourage you to, if you have the chutzpah, <laughs> if you have the courage, to Google Isaiah 53 and read the words. And then go to IMetMessiah.com and watch the testimonies of Jewish people from all walks of life, religious and secular, who have met Yeshua as Messiah. And for those of us who are in Messiah, it's an opportunity for, for um, to worship Yeshua as, the high, as our high priest, Read from the book of Hebrews, okay? Hebrews 3, 5, 9, and 10 specifically, pointing to Yeshua as the high priest. If you could take off of work, do so, if you're led to. If you feel led to fast. Now, Jewish people fast 25 hours, bread and, I mean, food and water. I don't recommend that, okay? <laughs> but if you're led to fast, do so in 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 solidarity with the Jewish people. And like I say, join with Ron Cantor and others at 9 a.m. if you're so led to pray for Israel and the nations. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, give him a hand. We are grafted. Yeah, no, no, we got these on the back.
back table? Yes. Yeah. Um, um, these are these are um, these are specifically decrees over Israel and the Jewish people. If you are led to pray for the Jewish people, then I I have barely enough I think for everybody. So you may want. To if you're missing, uh, Gary, send me that too yeah. in an email, and I'll put it on our letter. Is that okay? Thank you, Gary. We are grafted in, folks. Very important to understand how Jesus is our feast. He fulf- it's amazing. Yeah, it's not an accident. So thank you, Gary, for bringing that. So prayer. Today, it's interesting. I, I was prepping, and normally, you know, I'm, I'm the chapter reader. Like the day I'm reading this book and I'm going through chapters, it seems like all of a sudden the Lord says, I got some themes, Right. What did I do last week? Was time, was it last week? Times and seasons. Today is about prayer, and I was like, okay, wow. Uh, one more thing, they are actually going to have a tabernacle set up at the fairgrounds, right? Is that on the thirtieth? Uh, Wilson County Fairgrounds. So you can check. There's a poster right back there. Scan the barcode. I'm not going to say more. If you want to see an actual tabernacle set up, the tent. The, that that will be amazing. We are going to try to go. Also, what, we are going. Thank you, Lance. We're going. And if you want to get, uh, do we have more handouts on the back table? For If you want more information on the fall feast. And it, we just feel like, you know, you some of you feel like, why, do we, why are we doing this? Remember, the well is the buffet. Well, what's the focus of your ministry? And I'm emphasizing this because sometimes people, I I just want to do that thing. Well, Jesus is the whole thing, and he's all of time and all of history. And you can can take this in over, you feel like I can't absorb all this. You ever feel like I I don't get it, right? Just relax. And then some days you're eating some veggies down here, and then some days God has you move along and you have some steak, and then sometimes it's coconut cream pie and, and so on. So... The well is all about all of it. That's why we, we grab hold of what God is doing. It, it does, over time, help give you this sense of like, well, it should, that God is amazing and he's connecting us all together in these things. And he had a plan from the beginning of creation through all of time. So what season are we in now? Well, we're celebrating certain things in the calendar to draw us closer to the Lord. That's the bottom line. What makes us more intimate with the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, um, but today the Lord says, emphasize prayer. And I'm like, well, Lord, we pray at all times without ceasing. So I'm going to do a little... Uh, scripture buffet today. It won't be just reading one thing, so just hang on for the ride. But we are going to start. We are in a season where many ministries in the region are tied together in this thing called Pray Nashville. I have my dog tag that has Pray Nashville on it, has a shorter version of the prayer we're going to read together. And um, and we don't often do this here. Um there's nothing wrong with doing written prayers. I mean, I grew up in a liturgical setting. I was raised Catholic. I went to the seminary to be a priest. I know. I probably would have been a priest if they would have let us marry. But as a young man, I was like, Lord, this ain't going to work. <laughs> oh, you don't think I work, look good in a, the robe and the cassock? I thought I looked pretty cool. I did all the holidays. And anyway... So very much liturgical, you know, seasons and times and feast and, you know, and written things. And I, honored, I thought that was great. But when I got born again and spirit filled, the Lord's, and scripture made it clear, the Lord is, he's okay that you have certain things you do by tradition and written and that, that goes into us, but there has to be this intimate thing. So all that to say, as we're talking about these things, or we're going to read this prayer together that all of the ministries are praying over the region, I cautiously go into that, that you don't just kind of mindlessly pray. And that's one of the scriptures talk about, don't pray like the pagans do, where they just do rituals and they spit out some stuff. Now that's Carl's bad, you know, I apologize for that. But we're going to read this prayer. This is kind of a start off of... Pray Nashville. We're praying over the region. 
praying over our city. We're uniting this idea of John 17 unity for the ministries in the city. I think it's a unique time. In all of our time of ministries, I've never been in a time where I've noticed so many different ministries, churches, denominations hanging out together, praying together, worshiping. Now, you can get more information on this if you go to PrayNashville.net. So if you want to get this and download this, but we're going to pray it today together to kick this time off because Leanne and I felt, (laughs) I kind of threw it in Leanne's lap this morning, Leanne, I feel like it's a season to pray. The well's going to pray. Now, we have you are prayer giants. You're giants of the faith. But we're going to be a little more determined. But today, we're going to start with this prayer to honor the Lord's connecting us to all of our brothers and sisters throughout the region and the area and around the world, because now it's catching on. Pennsylvania, different states. Pray D.C. I'm like, Lord, what's going on? What's going on? So I'm going to address some of this call to prayer. Why does the Lord call us to be a people of prayer? Okay, so let's join together first. We're going to unite with intention and with sincerity. Even though we're reading the words, we're going to go slow, so I'm not in a hurry. So this is the common prayer that they're going to use now for the next, well, they're going to do it for a year, a full year of this. So I'm keeping this card in my Bible um, we'll talk more about our 30 days. You can take a picture or when you go to the, you know, praynashville.net, you can download that too. So here we go. Our Father, High King of Heaven, we, your people, humble ourselves and pray. Seek your face. Turn from sin while trusting your word that you will forgive and heal our land. Cover every citizen, every sphere of influence, and all in authority with your banner of blessing and canopy of protection. Your kingdom come, your will be done in greater Nashville as it is in heaven. May the gospel be proclaimed disciples made, and laborers sent into the harvest. May we be one as Jesus and the Father are one. May we be a shining city on a hill that brings you glory. As Scripture urges, we pray for the peace and prosperity of our city. In your great mercy, For your name's sake, answer our petition as we come boldly before your throne of grace in our time of need. As in Nehemiah's day, rebuild our walls, restore our homes, and revive our hearts in one voice, in faith, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we can give the Lord praise, shouts, hallelujah, all of that. It's vital. This is a new, this is a shift. Why in 20, why now, right? Well, because the Lord said so. What better reason than say, I, you know, I, I don't have a plan here. Leanne and I don't go, well, what are we going to do for 2023? There's not a calendar for this house. It's, it's, it's whatever the Lord calls. So we trust God to pull us into times and seasons to recognize Jesus in the feast. And those traditions point to what he's trying to accomplish in the earth right now. So you honor the past, you honor tradition, but look with fire and the, the sight of the Holy Spirit to move into this and bring these things to life, even if you read it on a card I've gotten very careful if I read prayer, if I read scripture, don't just go brain dead. (laughs) My spirit man goes, engage this, engage this, and believe this, and step into this. I'm like, wow, Lord, really? Yes, and the Lord's calling us for that. So a season of prayer, and I just invite you, do what you can. Don't do it with guilt or condemnation. Ask the Holy Spirit, like, how do I do this? What's my part of this, Lord? Uh, I've asked the Lord for years now, Lord, how, is, how do we pray at all times without ceasing? And the Lord says, well, you just walk with me knowing that I'm always here, and then we're talking all the time. Like, I'm preaching right now, but I hear the Father.
So, yeah, that's how you do it. Somebody said, what is a Christ consciousness? God consciousness? I've heard these different teachings, and I kind of, the older I get, I get it. But you young guys can have it too. That every generation has the privilege to step in because the Lord is always calling. He's always present. He's omni everything. It's just we have to kind of get this engaged with where you're at in him if you're in him. And if you're not in him, I invite you to let him in. Open the door and let him in. Paul McCartney, he was preaching without knowing it. Someone's knocking at the door. All right, okay. So... I know, I'm a musician. So I've got some things to read, just a couple things. I'm not going to be long, actually, because this is a season of prayer. One thing, one other thing about prayer, we had some of our core people with us for a while. We, were, we said, I'm going to set my iPhone to alarm at noon. And for a, quite a while, I think we did a 30-day stretch, but it continued, and I still have that. I said, well, let's pray. Let's agree together. We're all going to be praying at noon every day. We'll stop at noon, and I'm, I'd be doing something, and wink, wink, wink. Oh, it's noon, Lord Jesus. And I realized five people were praying with us. So I'm just going to throw that out. Leanne and I are calling out to you for the next month. You can take your device if you can do it. Without disrupting your work, you know, if you have obligations to your promise, then you'll have to shift that. But if you can, pray for whatever the Lord gives you. Hmm. Is it 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45, an hour? I'm targeting an hour. And I'm, and I'm going to read a story about that, why that kind of hit me. Um, yeah, we try to pray every day. So you're thinking, well, Carl, if we pray at all times without ceasing, why does it matter what time? There's something about unity and concerted prayer. And for this house, we haven't done that very much. Sometimes we have seasons. Of, we started this year in January with prayer and fasting. Are you ready to dive in again? I hope you didn't quit praying just because we, okay, we did our 30 days. The goal here is to raise you up as disciples and faith giants where you're you're like moving in power and doing things and you're like, you guys, God met me and I was out doing something and I was like Jesus in my world. That's what Leanne and I know the Lord has called for in this house. This is who you are. So I'm going to tell a story about a man named Jeremy Lanfear, I think. Pardon me if I'm not saying it. But he led the world in a prayer revival. And it kind of started the third great awakening. How about that? So Jeremy was born in Albany in 1809, but he made his mark in New York City, and then he moved there to find employment and become a success as a clothing wholesaler. Although he attended church to sing in the choir, he was not a Christian. Take that in. Just some people are... so so culturally ingrained in a thing or they like to sing well you know i just go to church but i don't believe in this okay so take note there's and i'm not going to have you raise your hand no <laughs> most of you are pretty fiery but i you know if i ever ask you like well tell me when you accepted jesus don't get mad at me because leanne and i kind of want to make sure you're all in just for because i want you to be in I want to see you in eternity. I don't want you just sitting here having fun, eating donuts, drinking coffee, and enjoying the fellowship, right? But here this guy is, Jeremy. He's not a Christian. He just wanted to sing. But while attending the Broadway Tabernacle, he discovered Christ's provision for his salvation and claim on his life. He immediately became concerned for the souls of others, so he did get saved. And those that were in spiritual darkness around him, unmarried, he was able to give his evenings and spare time to passing out tracts and talking to people. So when he radically got saved, he realized the importance of the change. Meanwhile, a Dutch Reformed church in lower Manhattan, down in Manhattan down there, had been declining in numbers because his members prospered. Take note of these stories. They prospered, and then they tended to move to wealthier districts the leadership decided to reverse this trend with an active visitation program. 
They offered a job to Lemphir, and he accepted. He would spend entire days visiting the members, witnessing in the blocks around the church, and holding Bible studies with anyone he could get interested in it. Now, that's fire. The work depleted him spiritually, but he found he was recharged if he spent an hour at noon in prayer. Hmm. Now, this story got me because I'm like, Lord, sometimes I feel, you ever feel worn out? Like, that's it. I can't do this anymore. And I'm thinking, the Lord says, you need to pay attention to this story. So I'm not just reading this. I thought, well, I'm just reading this. I'm encouraged. And the Lord said, yeah, but you're going to read it to the people because you need to hear the story. Why do awakenings happen? There always seem to be like some prayer hungry people. Like in Wales, okay, so, right? There's always prayer connected to revival. So for an hour a day at noon, he would pray. Even so, his efforts still seemed fruitless. It occurred to him that if prayer were vital to him, himself, perhaps others would benefit too. He obtained a room on Fulton Street and printed 20,000 flyers, setting the first meeting for noon on, the de- on this day, Wednesday, the 23rd, September of 1857. So this was yesterday. I read, th- read about this because it was the anniversary of this start. If ever there was a time to pray, this was it. <laughs> what are we saying right now? If there was ever a time the Americans need to be praying, we've nev- it hasn't changed. The ways of mankind do this and this and this. And somewhere in a culture, there's somebody that catches the baton. This was the man. And now we are the people. Americans in the 1815s, they feared that a civil war was coming. She whiz, something sound any different now? Many were disillusioned with the church. Hmm, really? Because William Miller and others had preached the end of the world back in the 1840s. Hmm, what did we talk about times and seasons? Every generation hits a wave of something. So Lamphere knelt to pray alone. His flyer, it seemed, had been dismissed by everyone he'd given it to. For a half an hour, he remained praying in solitude. Only The only guy in the room. Then a man showed up and, without a word, knelt beside him. Then another. By 1 p.m., 10 knees were on the floor, five people. The following week, several more people appeared. By October, he had to get a larger building. On the 7th of October, he had 40 businessmen. Now, at this time, it was just the businessmen. He'd been going to the business district in New York. They became prayer partners. They asked to meet daily. The timing could not have been more perfect. On October 10th, 1857, financial panic struck America. (laughs) Banks folded, railroads went bankrupt, factories were closing, unemployment was crazy. Desperate people turned to prayer. Such a great number of people flocked to churches that soon many places of worship around the city were forced to open their sanctuaries at noon and evening for prayer. A reporter who rushed from sanctuary to sanctuary one noon counted over 6,000 people praying. Something was happening. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And he was not able to visit every place where they're meeting. The New York Herald at the time and the New York Tribune covered the phenomenon, bringing it to the attention of others. Now it's happening in Chicago, in St. Louis, in Cleveland, and other cities at the time for noon prayer. The YMCA also held prayer meetings wherever its branches had formed. What's happened to the YMCA of today? Not judging, just saying the slippery slope. All right, the result was labeled what? America's third great awakening, and people began to inquire how they might get saved. As many as a million people were converted or renewed in that revival that followed. Churches that had been dying filled up again. The revival leapt around the world then, primarily in regions occupied or influenced by the British Empire of the time, but also on the European continent. Jeremy Lemphier continued his work in New York streets until he was too old to get around anymore, and he'd passed away in 1898. The first Welsh revival ignited from the candle of Lamphere's prayer revival 
was they picked up what he'd been doing in America. So we've heard of the Welsh revivals. And there's more writings about that. So I'll let that go. And there's a lot of stuff on the Christian history. And I was just looking up, well, what, what happened today in Christian history? This was, literally came up. And the Lord said, I want you to talk about prayer. And this was about prayer. So I'm like, Lord, what are you doing? You're calling us to be a people of prayer, right? Thank you, Lord. So we are praying people. So Bible verses about prayer. And you can look this up online too. And I thought, well, Lord, I want to, what more? He says, no, I'm going to show you a bunch of my word. This is uh, what? Word salad today on prayer. So you can feel encouraged because I think what the enemy does, he doesn't want us to talk to Papa very much. He will do everything he can. He'll make you feel like, well, I'm not a good prayer person. I, I don't know how to pray. Or it doesn't work. And you hear all these voices in your head like, I don't have an hour a day. And when we started doing the 15-minute things, like, that was even hard at the time. Then I found myself, I'd get in the groove of it, and I'm like, I'm praying longer than 15. And then some days I'd get busy. I'm like, I don't have time to pray. And the Lord says, can you just give me 15? It's hard. Is it going to be easy? We're going to launch today. Well, we're past that right now. But you were here worshiping and praying. We're in the atmosphere. But tomorrow's starting, of course, with Yom Kippur and then praying for Israel. That's a great thing. Start with the 9 o'clock prayer tomorrow. Put it in the middle of your work. If you, if you have to work, you have to honor your word. That's honoring your life. Don't be doing other things when you have a boss and you're supposed to do something. When the Lord carves out a space, you might do it like, Hey, I get a coffee break. I'm going to skip the coffee, and I'm going to go do a prayer walk for five minutes, and when I got to get back to my desk, I do my work. So you don't have to do this all at once. You can say, if I could just pray for a little bit. You're praying. Then you'll find, like, I'm doing my work, but I'm talking to the Lord, doing my work and talking to the Lord. That's the praying at all times without ceasing. So 21 Bible verses about prayer. I'm going to go quick. We're going to be done here in a little bit. Rejoice always. Pray continually. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Would you guys like this list? Okay, I will get this printed out and it will be here. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, one of my favorites. Don't be anxious about anything. Yes, Carl. But in every situation, with prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then the peace of God, which transcends your thinking, any way you understand, that will guard your heart and your mind in Christ. You want to get past being freaked out? Pray. 1 John 5.14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears it. Wow, Colossians 4, verse 2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it, right, Teresa Bell, and it will be yours. Kenneth Hagin built a whole ministry on Mark eleven twenty four. 24. He just said, oh, I just started believing what I prayed is going to happen. And I challenge you, giants, when you pray, just don't, don't do like uh, I'm doing my routine. No, I believe it. It's right there. I'm praying it, and it's coming. Ask Holy Spirit. If I speak it, it's meant to be. Even if I don't see it yet, it's meant to be, and it's already done in the Spirit. How's your elbow feel today, Leanne? Yeah. Yeah, sickness, disease, finance, anything comes at you, I'm more and more like, let's pray. And that's not Carl. And we've done ministry. I'm a pastor of this church. I'm a worship musician. I still have to tell my flesh guy to like, oh, pray. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm Jesus in the earth. I can speak. And my spirit man has to go, hello, McFly, wake up. Hey, get a clue. Jeremiah 29, 12. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen. Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in your afflictions, and 
faithful in prayer. Psalm 145, verse 18, the Lord is near to all who call on him. In other words, they're praying to all who call on him in truth and with prayer. Acts 16, oh, sorry, Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know yet. Oh, Lord, I don't get this yet. Call to me and I will, oh, okay, call. Hello, Jesus, I really got to, yes, call and ask the Lord to reveal things you need to know. Every day, all the time. Acts 16, 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Midnight, I'm, I'm out. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know if I was in prison for my faith. I might be up later. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Ooh, Matthew 6, verse 7. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. This was one I touched on earlier. For they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Okay, I'm going to pause. Don't feel like you got, this is the idea like, oh man, if I had just prayed three hours like that great praying guy. No, pray with faith. If you got one good sentence and a sincere heart, the Lord's with you. Whew. Don't, keep, don't believe that the enemy has shut the church down with prayer and miraculous things and so much by doing lies that sound religiously good, right? That sounds so religious. Well, you know, if you were a little more holy or if you prayed another hour, they might get healed. No, if you got it, you got it. The, yeah, you guys get this. So don't let the enemy lie. Pagans just rattle on prayers and they do this and they do crazy things and Satanists pray. Praying to the wrong guy, but man. Psalm 18, 6. In my distress, I called the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. From, from his temple, you don't have to go. I, I appreciate they're going to rebuild a temple, but who's the temple right now? Or it's not up, oh, from, finally God heard me. No, God hears you when you think it and you start speaking it. It engages the temple. You living stones, you're stones. You're already stoned in Christ. <laughs> Bam. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 6, 6. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who's unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Doesn't mean we can't play and pray in public or do, you know, prayers together. But there's a thing. Pray wherever you are. That's why you don't, you know, you don't have to go somewhere to make it happen. 1 John 5, 15, I'm almost done. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked him for. Sorry, I got to insert this. More and more, I'm like, anytime my mind starts to like, well, I really hope. No, I don't hope anymore. I know it's true. How do you feel, Leanne? Well, it feels a little better. If she hurt her elbow, we were rowing a boat for five hours. I said, in Jesus' name, it's healed. And I didn't let my brain go like, well, I hope she doesn't need surgery. And I just like, no, it's healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> but if you get surgery, I don't care. Well, I'm going to pray for a quick recovery. I'm going to pray. They open you up and they go like, what, what did we do? There's nothing wrong here. I'm believing for the miracles. I'm believing now more and more, like when I speak it and think it, it's Jesus. And if I miss it, then forgive me. Now, I try to hear Holy Spirit if he says to do something else, but when the Lord speaks, obey. Wow. James 5, 16, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I wish I had more time to teach on that. You can confess your sin. I know. I'm going to post Linda's. Linda did a great teaching on prayer, actually, at the Women's Gather. So I have permission to post that. That's going to be on the Well YouTube. Stay tuned. It'll be there. Learning to pray. Yeah, you can confess your sins. People say, well, if, I don't, if I'm not really clean, then my prayers won't work. Who's in Christ? If you're in Christ, are you... 
How clean does that get you? Well, let me see. Well, but Carl, wait a minute. I know I still got some junk. Me too. Welcome to the club. On this side, you're going to have junk, broken stuff. You'll probably sin today sometime. Pause. Well, word or deed or faithlessness. If disobe I didn't know I was disobeying or I didn't know I missed an opportunity. Well, that's a sin. You weren't being fully Christ in that moment. Well, that's not fair. Well, that's brokenness. That's our broken humanity. Do you get that? So what they're saying here now, if you have wrong people, that's the confession to one another, I believe. It's not the confession of like, we have to go to a priest to be forgiven. No, Jesus is our high priest. No disrespect. If you live in a liturgical environment where you still go to somebody for confession, well, that's, it's okay, but you have to realize it's Christ that's your redeemer. And if you do that as a ritual, just to feel better, that's fine. But if you're in Christ, you're fully forgiven all times, 24-7. And I don't have more time to unpack that here, but it's true. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Just make that gold and don't ever forget that. Romans 8, 1. Yes, Lord. James 1, 6. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Carl, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed around. We're going to have to let go of doubt. And if they're like, well, what do you got? I got faith. I got Jesus. I'm going to pray it, and we're going to see it. But Carl, wait a minute. I'm like, I have no wait a minute. I have no plan B. No, I cast off all doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, and I'm tired of that. The Lord got me. That was Holy Spirit said, Carl, you got to quit doing that. Well, I prayed a good one, but I don't know if they're going to make it. Well, what good was that? <laughs> Anybody ever do that one? Well, Lord, here I go. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> and yet sometimes God breaks through, and you think, I don't know if I got faith for this. Quick side note, the grace of God prayed for a friend that was dying and they died. Then we went and prayed to bring her back from the dead and she wouldn't get up. I was so aggravated because I'm like, Lord, I know I got that much faith. But that was the end of that story. About six months later, we're doing the well in the house and the guy says, I got to get my, my rotator cuff done this. We remember Mike walked in. Uh, I got surgery tomorrow. And I was still of like, Lord... I'm just going to pray the surgery goes really good. And the Lord's like, I'm getting ready to pray for my... The Lord goes, is that all you got? <laughs> I knew. He's, Gosh, Lord, could you just... Okay. The Lord says, pray that his shoulder, his rotator cuff is healed. Oh, okay. Mike, in the name of Jesus, I just command that shoulder to be fixed. You know, you can't fix that. They have to fix a rotator cuff, right? Once, that, once that's torn, Mike goes, oh, oh. Oh, my, whoa, what happened? God goes, wink. I'm like, I, I'm like, that's cool, God, because that mustard seed was planted in a pool of doubt, but I had enough. So if you ever feel like I don't quite have enough, you can remember that testimony. There are just sometimes God helps you out, you know? He always, he's always doing it. So that gave me courage to keep praying even if I feel like I'm not all there. You ever feel like, I don't have all this figured out. Does anybody here have it all figured out? Please don't raise your hand. <laughs> John 15, 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. You, it's for you, it's for all of us. Acts 1.14, they all join together constantly in prayer. That's what we're about to do. Along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. 
John 14, 13, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. When, when miracles start happening and your prayers are getting answered, you're just going to glory in the goodness of God. You're not going to get full of yourself. We won't let you. No, we'll bring, we, we, we'll be iron on each other, brother. You're doing good, but it ain't you, right? Just remember that. Luke 6, 27 through 28. We're about done. One more, but or two more. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. That preaches plenty right there. I don't need to explain that. We have to live that. And James 4, verse 2. You desire, but you don't have, so you kill. Either in reality or with your words or the way you think. You covet because you can't get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Now, in that, James was really going after unbelievers, but he was really going after the church, too, for unbelief. So the Lord, I mean, that's just some of them. That's just 21. But it felt like that was, that was heavy duty. So I'm calling you to prayer. As pastors of the house, we felt like the Lord says it's time. Call the people into prayer. I don't know, pray for me. Uh, I've thought about like coming over here every day at noon and opening the door. So I'll let you know if that happens, but it's not necessary. If I don't, set your watch, set your iPhone clock. Today you can put it on one of your things at 12, and then you decide how much you're going to pray. I recommend at least giving it five minutes, maybe 15, but if you got an hour at lunch break, or if you get a lunch break, say, Lord, I'm going to start with giving you... you know, you can negotiate with the Lord. No, you be obedient to the Lord. The Lord will tell you. And sometimes he might stretch us. I'm looking for whatever the Lord wants us to do with this. And be engaged with the Pray Nashville thing, the card we did. If you want to start with that, Lord, start with your family. Build a little circle. Lord, me and my wife, our families, family stuff. Then you guys, the church, our friends, closer friends and family and church. And then... Build the circle. So how the Lord calls you to pray. You can have a routine of praying. It's okay. Use that as a launch pad. But I do want to admonish you that your prayer life becomes thinking where you're really communicating with Father, Son, Holy Spirit, listening. And the Lord will show you what to engage. Your assignments will be different than my assignments or the person right next to you. Okay? If we have call to prayer and we, some of you show up here at noon, then we'll... Figure out what the Lord wants to do with concerted prayer. So, Lord, we give you all the praise and honor and glory for what you're releasing in these days, in these living stones, in this house that is all yours, Lord, the house of the Lord. And, Lord, we declare your glory into the earth, and we commit ourselves to be ones that are people of prayer, that we are houses. You say, my people, shall, this shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, for all peoples. So Lord, we, we step into that and receive our assignments for this season. And we trust that you, by your Holy Spirit in us, will teach us how to navigate what's coming in these days to the glory of your name. All God's people said, amen. amen. Don't forget this Wednesday is WPN prayer night. Yeah, so concerted prayer, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, the WPN leaders will lead. It'll be a night of prayer. But start today, if you can, pick a time, or at least tomorrow. But I think my prayer is that you find yourselves becoming people that are praying at all times without ceasing and moving in the powerful things that Jesus has designed for you. Amen? Yeah, prayer teams will be up here. If you want private prayer, you can hang out in fellowship. Don't forget, we're going to... Fellowship a little, but we're going to clear house rather quickly because it'll be the 2 o'clock Patriot Academy. Learn about biblical citizenship right here. So have, have a great day. We'll see you next time at the well. Yeah, yeah. anybody that can stay for the, the academy, you're welcome to do that. You can dash out and get some quick lunch and come back, and we'll see you then. All right, ciao.